is uh, dealing with the remainder theorem. It says you have this polynomial that's exactly, exactly divisible. That means that one of the roots is what? Negative 1. The other root is 2. Now, if they say the remainder is 5 or the remainder is negative 2, what you would do is when it's exactly divisible, what is the y value that it's equal to or the x value that it's equal to? Zero, right? So what we do is we put in the negative 1 into the polynomial, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, plus 6, and equal to 0 because it's divisible. If it's not divisible, then we'd put the remainder like 6 there or negative 2. So then what I did is I simplified. I get negative a plus 5, b plus 5 equals 0, and then I just regrouped it to b plus 5 equals a, and I set that right here. Now I have one equation and two unknowns. I need another equation. So what else am I going to put into this polynomial instead of x equal to negative 1, what else should I put in? 2. There it is. Put the 2 in there, and I get uh, 8a plus 4b plus 8 divided by 4. I get 2a plus b plus 2, or just b plus 2 is equal to negative 2a. Now I have my two equations and two unknowns, and I take the opposite of the bottom one, so the b's cancel out. And I get 5 minus 2 is 3a plus 2a is 3a, so a is equal to 1, and b can just be, if a is 1, b is going to be 1 minus 5 or negative 4. Those are those two. Okay, uh, next one. This is a problem we use in honors pre-calc because it's a conceptual one. It's four marks, one for each answer. So it says f of g of x equals 3. So forget about g of x for a moment. f of what? equals 3. So you look at the f function, that's this one, and you just look to see when y is equal to 3. And y is equal to 3 at 0 and at 3. So I just say that g of x has to equal 0, g of x has to equal 3. That's the composition thing that we're looking at. So if g of x has to equal 0, g of x equals 3, I take the g of x uh, curve, which is this one, and I look to see when g of x is equal to 0. Well, that's, e that's at negative 1 and at 4. So there's two of my four answers, negative 1 and 4. And then g of x can also be equal to 3. So that's happening at 1 and 2. So those are my four answers. I absolutely adore number five. Five is a puzzle, if there ever was one. If you look at a vertical asymptote at x equal to negative two, that is the denominator has to be equal to zero. So b plus negative two equals zero, and x is actually negative two. So it's going to be c times negative two, or b is equal to negative two c. Uh, the y-intercept, that's where the function hits negative 2. Y-intercept is negative 2, so the numerator, a plus x, has to equal negative 2 at 0, x equals 0, so a is equal to negative 2. So I know what a is. Now I just have to find the other ones. X-intercept, that's where the y value equals 0. So a plus, and this is x is, is 2, a plus 2 has to uh, equal 2, and a core, or excuse me, a plus 2 has to equal 0, so a is negative 2. So you see this nice little confirmation of those two. Then I take the limit as x goes to infinity, and if we took this part, the limit as x approaches infinity using L'Hopital's or just our idea of uh, greatest exponent of x, you get 1 over c equals y equal to 2. So if the limit of infinity is 2, c, 1 over c equals 2. So therefore, you're going to have c is 1 half. Now that c is 1 half, you can find b, and that's going to be negative 1. So we have a is negative 2, b is negative 1, and c is 1 half. You caught that one. Yep, this, 
because this is negative, this will make this positive. So will my B be equal to a positive one then? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Joy, for catching that. And C is still one half. All right, so then you get to the next part. So we found A, B, and C for that. And I have a little error here. So um, what you're going to do next is using these values, you're going to sketch this. And you need to recognize that this is a reciprocal and an absolute value. So you just need to see that this is flipped over and it's the absolute value. So I started with this green, which is my function, and then I took the, um, the reciprocal of that. So wherever it hit zero, I made a vertical asymptote. And uh, wherever I had a max or min, I dealt with that. My y-intercept was two, so uh, or my uh, horizontal asymptote is two, so one over two is one half. So what happens here is that when I do my reciprocal, my green, the re uh, reciprocal of that is going to be the purple. Because 1 over negative 1 is still negative 1. 1 over 1 is 1. This purple one is going to be that. So then all you do for the last part is you take the, the absolute value. Anything that's negative gets popped up. And so that's where we get that figure. Okay, and get to the last two quick. Uh, this one is, uh, a, and I think we did this one already as a math induction one. The math induction is laid out here, but I just wanted to talk about this first part. Show that sine of 2nx is equal to this horrendous thing. That's to help you with your math induction later. Uh, which they do a lot of, what I would do is take this sine nx and just go sine nx plus x minus x. So the technique that you're doing here is you're starting with this, in parentheses, sine nx plus x minus x. Regroup and then rewrite, and then you'll have uh, what they have here for your seco cosi. And then the last one, paper three, you've got your... Uh, Divide everything by x squared. This is going to be a u substitution, homogeneous. Divide by x squared. You notice this will be y over x squared. This will be y over x. This will be 4. And then this will turn into u plus x du dx. This will be u squared plus u plus 4. Subtract the u's, and you'll get x du dx equal u squared plus 4. In your heads, u squared plus 4. 1 over that. What is that? Arctan. This is arctan. This is natural log of x. So this will be uh, 1 over 2 because of the a is equal to 2. u is equal to x. So you're going to have 1 half arctangent u over 2 equal to, um, this will be u, natural log of x plus c. You need to find your C value. So to find C, what you're going to do is you're going to put x equal 1, y equal to 2. U is y over x, so I put those in. And I'm going to get uh, C is equal to pi over 8. So when I put that into this one over here, I'm going to get 1 half arctangent y over 2x equal natural log of x plus pi over 8. Multiply everything by 2, so I get 2 natural log of x pi over 4. And I take the tangent of both sides. Tangent of the arctangent of y over x is y over 2x. Tangent of this. And I multiply both sides by 2x. So I'll get y is equal to 2x. Tangent ln of x squared plus pi over 4.